Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Bulletproof Entrepreneur Podcast. My guest today on the show is Derek Lewis. Derek is one of the world's leading business book ghostwriters. He writes exclusively for business thought leaders that are thinking about getting their ideas and their thoughts out of their head into a book. Derek kind of stumbled into ghostwriting. He used to work a job where, you know, he was the guy that got assigned to do the writing in his company, but he started moonlighting as a copywriter, eventually started writing articles, and before you know it, he unexpectedly found a client who asked him to write a book, and from there, he's he was off to the races. Today, as a leading business book ghostwriter, Derek charges anywhere from 50000 to 75000 to write a business book, and he's worked with many people from all around, from five continents and from leading companies like McKinsey, Disney, and much more. So I'm pleased to have him on the show today to tell us a little bit about himself, his business, and his experience. He's also a published author. He's the author of the book titled The Business Book Bible, Everything You Need to Know to Write a Great Business Book, as well as a podcaster whose topic is, of course, his passion, business book ghostwriting. So with that said, Derek, welcome to the show. Oh, gee, what an introduction. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. So tell us, I gave the audience listening a little brief overview of your background, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got started in this business. You know, I, um, it's funny that you asked me this question because just a few days ago, I was going back kind of over the, the events of, of life. You know, it was uh, Steve Jobs in his, uh, in his commencement speech, um, that he, he gave at Stanford and that he said, you know, you can't, uh, you, you can't see how everything's connected. It's only looking back that you can connect the, the dots. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking back and, you know, kind of connecting the dots. And, you know, Chia, I realized that, um, it was really, it was chance. Uh, I guess it was chance meets preparation. Mm. So on the one hand, um, I, I had natural skill in, in writing. And um, while I was working for uh, a, a company, I kind of became their, uh, their in-house marketing guy. Yeah. Um, but while I was starting a, a, a small um, business technology, a small, uh, small business IT services company with a friend, um, I needed to make a little bit of, of grocery money because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I had a wife and, and, and a child. So I actually went to interview at a newspaper to be an ad salesman. Mm-hmm. And uh, in that conversation, um, he, whenever he found out that I could write, he said, well, look, forget the, the ads. He said, I can sell the ads. He said, what I need is somebody who can, who can write. I need you to interview these, these business owners. Um, and write uh, what they call an advertorial, which mm. is kind of like a, an advertisement that it looks like an, an editorial. Yeah. And uh, he said, "That's what I. That's what I really need." He said, "I can. I can sell as many of those as you can write." Mm. And so I started uh, doing that, and I said, "Well, you know, if I'm doing all this over the phone, maybe there's people elsewhere." So then I started looking for the people, and that's how I got into into copywriting, just yeah. for looking. By looking for other people who were needed some advertorials, um, so you know it was uh, I think it was uh, Louis Pasteur who 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 said uh, fortune favors the prepared mind. Yes. Yeah. So I, I on the one hand I want to say I stumbled into it, but on the other hand I want to say that you know kind of everything that I'd done before uh, led me into it. Mm. So then um, so then I just started on on my own. I didn't have any kind of uh, Formal training. My uh, my my degrees are in business and, and economics and economic development. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I just knew that I had a raw talent for writing, and I found that people were actually you know they don't like to write, so they'll pay somebody else to write for them. And uh, I, for the first couple of years, I was just winging it. Mm-hmm. Finally, I found um, a great online community of ghostwriters. I found a couple of mentors. Um, who took me under their wing. I uh, uh, took a couple of, of courses, actually the only one that was that was available, um, and just kind of pulled myself up by the by the bootstraps. Hmm. So um, 
I've gone from um, from making pennies to now um, year after year. I'm a six figure ghost writer. I grow six figures. Sit in my office here um, in my home. Hmm. I make my own hours. I work whenever I want to. I get to work with amazing people yeah. who are just brilliant thought leaders in their field. And uh, they actually, you know, they, they, they respect me. They come to me asking me what, um, you know, how their book should be structured and, and asking for my advice. So I've gone from being a, a copywriter begging for, for scraps and basically having to take whatever um, was available to the point where I can, I can be a little choosy. I, I can turn down projects and, and refer them on to other people that I think are more qualified or other people that I, I think um, would be a better personality fit mm. for, uh, for those particular customers. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm living the dream, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I see, because the way I found you was um, I had booked to – interview matt pollard when his book came out the introvert urge and i saw at the bottom of his book was Derek lewis i'm like huh i wonder who that is that was the first time i just i I actually noticed a name under the main author's name so i looked and i saw your profile and i said okay i'll probably have Derek on the show to talk about it because i don't understand why he's there on the on the book cover and then the more i read up about it the more i was like oh man that is so interesting that you can actually have you know, the thoughts in your head, you're the entrepreneur, you're doing business, but also, you know, you need somebody to translate what you have in your brain into the written word and so that it's to look good, sound good, read good, and sell well, which is what you specialize in. And because you specialized to such a degree in just business books, you're now kind of like the brain surgeon, you know, the one guy that, you know, if you need something done, especially in the business book world, people come to you instead of you saying, oh, I write uh, books, so you can come to me for any book. I'm sure you wouldn't command the same multiples of figures if you were just a generalist as opposed to the kind of specialist that you are today. Yeah, I have the not only the, the confidence, but the confidence mm-hmm. to charge much higher fees because I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly yeah. what questions to, to ask. I know, I know they're, they're my author's problems and my author's roadblocks. Mm. Um, sometimes even better than, than they do. I can describe a situation and they say, Oh my God, that's exactly what I'm going through. Yeah. In the back of my mind, it's, I'm thinking it's not like for me, it's not rocket science. It's just I've, I've worked with so many of the same kinds of authors so many times. Mm-hmm. I know where the, the common bottlenecks um, and, and hurdles are. But because this is the first time that they've talked to me, they think that I'm, you know, I'm a magician. I'm, I'm a genius. Yeah. Because I can read their mind. And it's really, it's just, it's experience. A lot of experience in a very narrow niche. Mm. So in those early years before you actually found a community and a mentor to help you, you know, you were writing, but you were also struggling and you were stumbling. So what were some of the mm-hmm. challenges you faced during those early stages of learning this craft? Hmm. Excellent question, Chi. And I, I, I'm going to talk about probably the, the two biggest challenges. And I, I would say that one was professional and one was personal. Okay. But Chi, at the bottom, of, at the root of, of every problem, it's really... Um, a personal problem. Mm. Every whenever you, we read uh, business books, especially whenever you start reading leadership books, it really comes back to um, it comes back to to how you how you see things, your psychology, your worldview, which is to say what's happening in in your own mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that every good business book has some element of self help to it because that's what you're trying to do. Whoever's reading the book. You're trying to influence them to think mm-hmm. um, and to see and to act differently. So the number one problem, um, or one of the, the two main problems I had, was that I didn't have the confidence to charge more than I did. Because writing was easy for me, mm-hmm. because it's just a natural ability that I have, and because I 
you know, I love business. I, I used to read business books even in even in high school. Yeah. And then got degrees in in business. Um, I just kind of took that for granted. So I I didn't properly uh, value the the skill set that I brought to the table. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, I didn't charge anything near what I should have. I was competing. I thought that I had to compete on price. Um, but whenever I looked at these, these other people that I was competing against for some of these same, you know, low paying jobs online, um, you know, they, they didn't have the skill set and the experience and the expertise that, that I did. But because I didn't have the confidence to charge more, I was uh, competing for scraps whenever I should have been competing at a much higher level. But I just didn't realize how valuable my skill set was. And so I was constantly booked because people were getting great value Yeah. Um, because, you know, they could, they could have the skill set of somebody – who had a lot more, um, who charged a lot more than, than I did, and yet I could write as well. I could uh, do copywriting as well as, as they did. Mm-hmm. So I undervalued myself. The second big problem I had is that even while I was uh, trying to uh, work with, with my friend to get this um, small business services uh, IT off the ground, even while I was moonlighting as a copywriter. And then even whenever I went um, and he and I parted ways because I realized I'm I'm not a tech guy, I'm I'm a writer. And I started writing. Even then, so much of my time was still, I was, I was, um, I was afraid. I was fearful. And so I kept trying to get uh, jobs. I kept trying to get, uh, you know, full-time employment. Mm. Um, And I, I just, I never could. Mm. And and I remember I remember the day I remember, um, I remember the moment I can take you to the to the spot where I had um, it was a it was a Thursday, no it was a Friday. Um, that afternoon, um, I had found um, I found a, a perfect job for me uh, locally. I mean, she, if you would have read my resume that I had at the time, and then you would have looked at the job description, you would have thought that it was nepotism. You'd have thought mm. that somebody that that somebody had said, "Okay, look, here's this guy's resume. I want you to write a job description based on this resume because we want to hire him." But you know, because it's government, yeah. we've got to look like we're uh, we're accepting other applications. But yeah. We already know who we're gonna we're gonna hire. Yeah, I mean that is how perfect I was for the job. So I immediately went and did uh, did, did a cover letter. Um, the one thing that I had going against me is that the deadline was um, was that Friday. Yeah, and so by the time that I actually found the job, it was a few hours past the, the deadline. But I went ahead, I said, look, I said, this is, I'm perfect for this. I went ahead, I sent in my application. I had to wait till Monday for the, for the office to open. I called Monday, you know, excitedly asked them if they had, you know, gotten the, um, you know, gotten my resume. And they said, sorry, um, you know, we stopped accepting, you know, resumes on, uh, on Friday at, at 5 p.m. Um, so we're, uh, we're scheduling, you know, interviewees now. Wow. So, so um, I was perfect yeah. for the job. It made me so angry that they had a job there that I was perfect for. That I, I, I it, it made me so angry that for at that point, by for probably almost two years, I had kind of gone back and forth between. You know, loving being, you know, an entrepreneur, but, you know, hating the, the low pay and hating the, um, the lack of, of security, uh, the lack of stability. Um, and so then I would go try to find a, a, a job even while, you know, trying to, you know, take care of my, my client. So it made me so angry that that was the day that I finally said, forget it. I am no longer going to allow my emotions, my feelings to be held um, and some bureaucrats' hands to say that the perfect job, the perfect candidate for their job 
can't apply because he found the job just a couple of hours too late yeah. to put his resume in and his cover letter in. So that's that's the day, that's the moment whenever I fully committed to being uh, being an entrepreneur, to being to supporting my myself. I just I stopped and and just devoted not just the the time, but my focus and my hopes and everything on making my little one man band work. Mm. And that is the day that everything changed. From that day forward, I started seeing real results. Mm. Um, and we could talk about all the reasons why that was. Yeah, let's let's but that one let, decision. Yeah, let's talk about it. I think part of it um part of it is is the is the time okay but more importantly it's the motivation okay so if you are, if you're of two minds you know on the one hand i kind of want to see this work on the other hand i want you know my i want to get this this job so it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of of uh, ron swanson off of that show uh, parks and recreation yeah he says never half-ass never half-ass two things whole ass one thing <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> yeah so whenever i started pouring again not just my time but more importantly my focus mm -hmm. into my business i started seeing exponential results not just, it wasn't just, okay, instead of, you know, spending maybe one day hunting for jobs and applying for them, I'm now going to have one more day that I'm going to do gigs and, and, uh, and try to, you know, really make this work. My whole demeanor, my whole everything completely changed so that I was just focused on making this work because employment was no longer an option. An option. And so in my subconscious, it was like uh, that, that urban, not that urban, but the old uh, legend of uh, Hernan Cortez um, whenever he landed in Mexico. Yeah. And, and, you know, legend says that he burned his ships. Yes. So that, uh, you know, there was no going back. There was no retreat. It was mm -hmm. either, you know, conquer Mexico or, or, uh, or die. Yes. That's kind of what it was. It was either I have to make this work or we're going to start. Mm. Love that. Love that. I mean, and that, that, that is basically, I think, the deciding, the tipping point of every successful entrepreneur is that you get to one situation, one circumstance, and it's like, you know, it's the straw that breaks the camel's back where you're like, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm, I'm going all in. Screw everything. I'm just going to do it. And once you decide and you make that commitment, like you said, there's, there's pretty much nothing that can stop, stop you at that point because come hell or high water, you're, you're already committed 100% and you're going to succeed no matter what it takes for however long it takes. I love that. So you go from that, you commit wholeheartedly and then things start to move and things start to grow. Now I know that, you know, from reading your blog, you know, listening to your podcast and listening to an interview you've done that, you know, it wasn't quite rosy. You know, you tried to do some of the things they tell us to do in the world of internet marketing. You know, you created your perfect avatar, you tried to get clients, but that adventure or that situation did not work. So tell us a little bit about how you started getting clients, you know, the strategy you tried and failed, and then what eventually started working for you. Two two big learnings for for me, um, and really both of them came about because I had uh, because of the two mentors that I found. You, you heard that saying, uh, "When the student is ready, the teacher will appear." Yes. So soon after, I had uh, committed, fully committed, gone all in on um, on making this work, and uh, then I had. Um, I'd found uh, someone who wanted to do a, a book, so then I decided, um, or discovered really, that I'm a really good book ghostwriter. Yes, I could do blogs and articles and, and some of the small things that I was doing, but I did a really great job being a, a full-length book ghostwriter. So that's what I started focusing exclusively on. Um, and about that time, I had, out of the blue, a very successful ghostwriter uh, reach out and, uh, and offer to, um, to mentor, well, yeah, to mentor, to coach me 
um, he set a ridiculously low fee because he didn't need the money. He just needed to know that I was serious. Yeah. And for him, he was um, part of it. Is I think he was he was kind of bored. Um, he was successful and he was looking for something to do. I think part of it is um, it's also you know stimulating to uh, uh, and it makes you an expert whenever you try to explain and teach what you do to uh, to someone else and it makes you think about new ideas. Um, so he took me under his wing and, uh, he taught me how to market as a, as a ghostwriter. So there were some things that I was doing that were, um, you know, that were just painfully obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, I mean, just something as simple as the homepage of my website was my blog and how I was still getting clients because the home, and I wasn't even really speaking about, um, about ghostwriting and, and, and business books. I was really talking more about um, entrepreneurship. And so how I got clients, I don't know. But he helped me, you know, turn my marketing around to where it needs to be focused on um, on the person that you're trying to attract. <laughs> wow, profound idea. Mm. Um, uh, so, I, you know, he basically helped me get my, my website uh, together. And then... Um, uh, we worked together for about six months or so, and then he realized that he he really wasn't going to make a, a, a go out of doing this kind of practice. He, I don't know, kind of got bored uh, again. Um, but we remain uh, great, great friends and, and, and colleagues. But uh, he said, okay, so, you know, I've, I've taken you about as far as I can take you. Mm. So, you know, he, he kind of let me, uh, you know, fend for, fend for myself. And so she for, I don't know. Three or four years, I tried everything to find clients. How do I find clients? Where do clients congregate? I tried everything. I tried purchasing uh, lists so that I could do direct mailing. I tried cold calling. Mm-hmm. I tried cold emailing. I tried ne- uh, LinkedIn uh, networking. I tried referral marketing. I tried everything. And no matter, it, it's, you know, no matter or not, it seemed it was. It didn't matter what I did or didn't do. Um, people always found me randomly. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just, you know, looking around online and I found your, your website and I'd like to talk about ghostwriting. I'm like, how did this person even find me? Because this, so all of my active efforts, my proactive efforts, um, what I now, uh, realize is called outbound marketing. Yeah. None of that ever turned up a lead ever because of the very specific narrow niche that I'm in. Mm. And so once I finally, you know, just accepted the fact that I could not control it and that it was completely out of my, I say out of my hands, as in, it's not like I can go beat down doors and the more time that I spend on it, the more results I'll see. Mm -hmm. I switched my focus to just, um, to completely what I now, uh, know is called inbound marketing Mm -hmm. um and so everything that i I do is around inbound marketing so it sounds like you know with with the kinds of clients that i'm going after that i should be able to target them i should be able to list them i should know their characteristics and in many cases i i do but i still have not found nor do i know of any ghostwriter who's found a sustainable way to um, to actively reach out to um, to, to to find clients, mm-hmm. and so I switched around my entire way of thinking from how do I find clients to now my my marketing question is how do I help clients find me? Oh. And that sounds like a subtle difference, but it is a completely uh, different way of of thinking about marketing and how I market myself. Um, so at that point, after, you know, doing that and, and coming to that realization that none of these other efforts um, resulted in anything. So I don't pour my time and effort into the thing that, that does seem to be working another kind of one of those duh moments. Yeah. Um, so my marketing was going well, but then I hit a sales slump. Um, so out of the, out of the blue, um, I just happened to read a, an article on, I think it was Forbes, uh, online that said, uh, it said something about niche marketing. Yeah. 
And I said, niche marketing? Well, I mean, you can't get much more niche than what I'm in. I mean, most people have never even heard of a ghostwriter, much less a ghostwriter exclusively for business authors. Um, and so I said, you know, just out of, out of a long shot, maybe I can call this this person. Maybe we can work something out. Well, lo and behold, she it was Matthew Pollard. And so uh, I reached out to him. Um, we decided uh, that we would do a little bit of, of, of work together because, you know, I was just a stranger calling him out of the blue. Yeah. And he was this author that I just, or this, uh, not even an author at that point, um, but uh, uh, an article uh, contributor who I had only read one article of. Mm-hmm. They were both a little wary and both a little cautious of each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we worked on a we worked on a couple of small projects together, but we realized um, that we well we realized that we really thought along the the same lines, and so um, so then um, again this is one of those when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So Matthew taught me how to sell. Mm. So up until the time I started working with Matthew. She never really crossed my mind that I needed to be a, a salesperson. Yeah. For me, I just always, you know, I was a decent marketer, so I put all my time into into marketing. Um, but Matthew helped me realize how many sales opportunities I was losing because I didn't try to sell. It was a it was a skill set that I was severely lacking. You know, we would get somebody would get excited about my marketing and then they would get on the phone and I just, you know, I'd kind of wing every conversation, just kind of let the, let the, um, author, um, you know, direct it. They were in the driver's seat. So Matthew taught me, um, the basics of how to sell. And so you put a decent marketing together with a decent sales and, um, it's been six figures a year ever since. Mm. So now let's let's talk a little bit about what you just said, which is basically you were getting others on the co- on the call, but yet you couldn't you mm-hmm. know, go from marketing to sales. So what's, what were some of the things Matthew taught you to do to make you become a better salesperson and to transition it from the author being in the lead or in control of the call to you being in control and leading the call and directing them to what you want them to do, which is take action. Mm-hmm. So two two big um, revelations for me. One is that I had to sell. I, I just did never, for some reason, I just didn't think that I had to sell. I thought that my marketing would do all the work and that whenever we got on the phone, they would have already made up their mind whether they were going to work with me or not. And the purpose of the call was just to give them, you know, the facts and information that they needed to reinforce whatever decision they'd already made. And that's not the the case at all. Um, so just realizing that, uh, that the call was just, you know, a first date okay. and that I needed to get them to, to marry me. Yeah. And so, you know, here they are, you know, saying, okay, well, uh, you know, if you're on a first date, well, you know, what, what do you like to, you know, what are your likes? What are your dislikes? What do you, uh, you know, what do you like to do for fun? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Yeah. And I'm waiting for them to pop the question of, of you know, will you marry me? Yeah. No, there's, there's a whole process that has to happen that you've got to go through before you can, before you can get to that point. So I, I know that I'm repeating myself here, but just that idea that I needed to actually do some kind of sales was a huge eye opener for me. Okay. Then the second thing was Matthew saying, okay, so let's just put together a decent sales process. So the, uh, so Matthew's book, the introvert's edge, which is, um, what you were just referring to a, a few minutes ago, mm-hmm. it is, uh, it's it is it's made for people like me, introverts uh, who need to sell, but we hate the the idea, or I used to hate the idea, the idea of sales and selling. Um, and so Matthew, you know, Matthew just walked me through a very simple kind of seven step process. Um, he said, so what you need to do is you need to have a a process, a system. So just like 
um, in in a in a factory. They have uh, they have machinery and they have a process. And you know the product goes down the assembly line and it stops at station one and station two and station three. Or how you you know how you you, you assemble a chair. You know there's you, you open the instruction book and here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. It's the same thing with a sales process. You mm. can wing it, and that's what extroverts do, and they can do that um, because they just have the natural gift of the gab, right? So that's why, you know, if if you're just a really extroverted person, oh, he could sell. Um, uh, one of the the, the sayings is that uh, you know he or she could sell refrigerators or uh, to Eskimos, yeah. you know, or to sell ice to Eskimos. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, introverts like me can't can't do that. And so Matthew said, okay, so step one is you need to just establish a little bit of of rapport. So practice what that looks like. How are you going to kind of break the ice? How are you going to introduce yourself to them? How are you going to make some kind of little personal connection with them? Mm -hmm. Um, And then uh, step two, you want to... um, you want to get them to start talking about their their pain. So what are they what are they looking for? How did they come across you? Um, he said, and then three, you want to be able to um, introduce yourself. And so you want it to to be rehearsed. You don't want to be fumbling and and uh, and trying to to find the words um, because then you come across as unconfident and as less of the professional that, that you are. So he just walked me through just a very simple seven step process. Um, and then he said, and so here's what you're going to do at the, at the beginning of the call, um, you know, you, you, you know, establish a little bit, a bit of, of rapport and, and kind of have a little bit of that personal connection and then tell them, you know, look, um, these are the way, uh, this is how I suggest these calls usually go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this, 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 and then we're going to talk about this, and then we can talk about um, the different services that I offer and my fees for each. Does that sound good? And then the person says, yeah, that sounds great. And so it's a very polite way of, of, letting, of signaling to them that I've got a way. This is the process. This is how it's, it's going to go. And, um, and we should be able to take care of, of and address all of your problems and everything in that process. But I'm in the driver's seat, and I've got a sales process, and I've got to put you into my sales process in order for my sales process to work. Mm. Now, the, the brilliance of Matthew's system is that you continually refine it, right? So you want to practice okay, and not practice so that it sounds like a, a script or that you sound like a a teleprompter or somebody uh, who's reading. just reading something off the page. Yeah. Right. You want to, you want to rehearse it as if you were going on stage, right? As if you were performing, uh, you know, if you were the star in, in your high school um, uh, musical or, or uh, Romeo and Juliet, you want to rehearse it like you would on stage so that you know when to emphasize things and when to pause and when to, when to laugh so that you can give your best performance and you can put your best foot forward um, in front of this potential prospect. Um, and you want to practice the same, you know, the same system because that's what a process is, it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But you want to continually optimize it and measure the results. Mm. Right? So even, even to the point of, you know, if I've got my script, changing a joke out, and, you know, seeing does that joke, does it actually kind of help seal the deal? Does it make a difference? Mm-hmm. Um, do I make less sales whenever I tell this kind of joke versus this one? It's basically, uh, it's A-B testing is, yeah. is all that it is. Yeah. Um, but not changing the whole thing, just changing one little piece at a time. And so I've continually refined my, uh, my sales process, and I've gotten... I've gone from being somebody who hates to sell to somebody who actually looks forward to it. And because of, because of following Matthew's idea of practice, 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 she, I, I have even, I, sometimes I have migraines. I have even taken a, a sales call when I had a migraine mm. and still did just as good, um, 
as I would have if I would have been at 100%. Yeah. Because the focus is on optimizing the process, not on my personality. Pretty good. Good. I love that. And, and, and that is so powerful because basically what you just said is, you know, you, even though you're not 100%, when you know the system and you work the system, the system works for you. It doesn't rely on you. It, yeah. it's, it's just you're just like a cog in the machine. As long as you keep cranking, the machine will do its work, and you will get results from that. That is that is pretty awesome. So what? Yeah, does, that's what, the whole idea behind his book. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your book. You know, the one that you wrote, which is um, <laughs> the, the business, business book Bible. Bible. Yes. Yeah. So after after. Um, ghostwriting for so many different business authors. You know, one of the the things that I I, I need to do um, is to is to educate myself, right? So I'd read books on on copywriting, read books on being a successful freelancer, read books on on marketing, read books on um, you know. So, but in 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 reading all these books and in trying to figure out how do I help my business authors? How do you how do you write a business book? there wasn't a book out there. And so I finally just got so fed up with the fact that whenever I had a problem or an issue, I would either go to my ghostwriting colleagues or I would just have to, you know, just try to come up with a a solution Mm -hmm. that I finally said, you know what? There's not a book out there. I know enough to at least write the first book. And so I basically wrote the book out of, out of being frustrated, out of being mad mm. that nobody else had done it. So I wrote the world's first book on how to write uh, business books. Mm. Awesome. And what's been the reception for the book? How has, it, how has the book helped you find clients or generate leads for your business? So... Um, it hasn't helped me find clients. It has helped clients find me. Right. So if you go on Amazon <laughs> yes. and you, right, right? Because yes. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a mind flip, right? Yes, yes. Because traditional marketing tells us that we're supposed to go find them. Yes. But if you're in an industry that only, that, that only responds to or works with inbound marketing, then you have to flip that question on, on its head. Yes. So the book, the book being out there, um, and being available has helped clients find me because there'll be plenty of authors um, who, like me, you know, I'm trying to write a, a business book, or in my case, I was trying to help someone write a business book. Um, let me go see if somebody ha- out there has written a book on this. Mm-hmm. And then they come across my book, they buy the book, they read it, and they realize, oh my God, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I didn't realize how hard it was to write a business book. I think I'm going to hire him either to uh, to coach me or to just go ahead and go strike the whole book for me. Oh. And with um, with as much as as I charge, the first person who came to me because uh, they found my book, it's more than paid for any time and effort that I put into the book um, forever. Wow, and. As as you corrected me, I, it just came to my mind that you know what that's. I think that's why people, authors, experts, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call yourself, that's why we all need to have a book out there. You know, because it's so easy for someone to read your book, read your content, get to know you by consuming your your thoughts that you've put on a page, and then they now want to reach out to you naturally. It even happens through this medium where we're talking on a podcast where you and I can talk for one hour. People get to understand what you've gone through in building your business, understand what you do for a living as a ghostwriter. And then when they put everything together, they're like, you know what? I should actually reach out to this guy. He knows what he's talking about. He can help me. So I think one thing I want to promote on this episode is basically that if you are doing anything in the world where you actually require clients to to pay you for your product or for your service i think it behooves you significantly behooves you to at least get a book out there so that your clients can find you and you can be better positioned in the marketplace mm-hmm. instead of you chasing people 
So as we start to wind down the show, yeah. as we start to wind down the show, Derek, tell us a little bit about, you know, if you could go back in time, this is just advice for people that are listening and they're like, oh, that sounds cool. You know, I want to follow in Derek's footsteps. You know, if you could go back in time, tell us a little bit about what you would do differently if you were to start all over again, knowing what you know now. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And and this precludes like the 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 option of of being able to invest in you know Google or, or Apple or Dropbox or anything like that, right? Yes, <laughs> a billionaire. Yeah. yeah. If I could, if I could go back uh, to my younger self and only give myself business advice, um. Well, actually, you know what? I, I from from a couple times of the year, I, I run a, a course on. Um, on on how to to graduate from being a freelance ghostwriter or a journalist to actually being a ghostwriter like mm-hmm. uh, like I am, mm-hmm. and I have um I have a, ste- a seven step pyramid, but step number one is don't quit your day job, and that sounds counterintuitive, right? Because we just had this whole burn the ships and mm. and commit. Yeah. Um, I should have had a much smarter transition plan. Mm-hmm. And if I would have had the courage, if I would have realized that I could take my passion, which is writing and business, if I would have actually just gone to look for um, even freelance jobs or jobs on the side where you could, um, or, where people were paying for those kinds of, of jobs. It didn't even cross my mind to go on the internet and see, is there anybody who would pay me to write business stuff for them? Mm-hmm. Never crossed my mind because that, I, I don't know, that just, it, I never thought that that was a potential reality. Yeah. I would have told my, I would have gone by, I, I go back in time and I tell myself to one, try to figure out how I can take what I love to do and to go make a living out of it because I love my life. I love what I do for a living every day. I wish I would have found this out years earlier, that I could make a great living doing just something that I never even dreamed of. I tell myself to go find that uh, the, the path to that um, and then to set up a really smart transition. The kind of job that I was in, I had enough flexibility that I could have kept my day job and kept the benefits and kept the salary and the stability. And I could have grown my business to the point that it was stable enough that I could quit my day job and have smoothly stepped into uh, being completely self-employed. But as it was, I spent quite a few years floundering mm-hmm. because not only, um, you know, with a business, it's like a baby, but, not only was I trying to get, uh, the, not only did the baby have to create enough work to feed itself, I was also trying to get the baby to create enough work to also feed my family. Mm-hmm. And that's just too much to ask of, of a baby. You've got to have, you know, a, a, a decent grown adult who can provide for itself and for its loved ones. Yes. So I would have had a, a much smarter transition plan instead of just, uh, quitting my job out of anger with my wife's support, but still I quit my job out of anger. Um, then my friend and I said, well, let's really make a go of this other business that we had been toying with. And, um, we worked together for about a year before I realized that I was really, I was holding the business back because I was not a tech person. I was, I was kind of a business guy and, and a writer. And so, um, and so I said, okay, well, let me just go, uh, um, just, you know, be just a, a, a copywriter, but I should have had a smarter transition plan. Um, and so because I didn't, well, we had quite a few years where we struggled. Okay. Awesome. And I- then lastly, I would say, realize that if you're in business, you have to sell. It doesn't matter what you're you're selling. You have to sell. Even if you're a self-employed chiropractor, Mm -hmm. you still have to sell. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Well, my friend, we've reached the uh, top of the hour, and it's been a pleasure talking to you and learning about this niche. 
But before I let you go, you know, tell us a little bit about where people can find you, get to know more about you, and of course, possibly reach out to you if they want to contact you and learn more. The best place is always going to be uh, my uh, my website, DerekLewis.com. Okay. And are you active on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, any of that? Yes. Yes. So um, I welcome anybody who'd like to connect with me on uh, on LinkedIn. Um, I'm still on Facebook, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of more, I'm kind of on the fence. For uh, for a number of reasons, uh, but definitely on on LinkedIn. Okay, cool. And I'll put those two links in the uh, show notes once everything is edited and published and ready to go. Derek, my friend, it's really been a pleasure learning from you. You know, I thought we were going to run shorter, but we ran longer. And of course, it was just as interesting staying because diving deep into your background, hearing your story and getting the wisdom out of what you've done for the past few years has really been beneficial to me and of course, to the audience listening on the show. Uh, Shay, that's that's my hope that it helps somebody to uh, avoid the mistakes that uh, that I went through so that they can find success even faster.